so with that said, um, I think what we're going to be working on today is a relatively uh, small app because dojos, we try to keep them as small as possible. Uh, it's really easy to kind of think that, oh, this will take no time at all. And then uh, uh, you end up with like maybe one tenth of what you're hoping to do. So what we're trying to do today is a health, little healthy app that on a web page, um, you're going to be able to set a timer that is going to keep track of how long you've been working. And it's gonna tell you that you have 10 minutes left in this session before you need to take a break. And then it's going to let the break run, um, and then it's going to start uh, over with another working session. And what we'd like to do is, during the working session, have a little progress bar that says you have this many minutes left of work, and this is, you know, you're almost complete with this section. And then during the break, the same thing. So you have this many seconds of break left and you have this much uh, progress, uh, as a little progress bar. And then the last bit is to make the work length and the break length uh, configurable, right? So maybe, I mean, personally, I, I, I tend to work in five to 10 minute spurts and then I take a, you know, a very short 30 minute break between my work sessions. So, you know, it's good that everyone can kind of configure these as necessary for themselves. Um, so we have uh, just pushed a uh, version or a repo that you guys can get started with. Um, so I'll post that in the dojo in just a second. I have one more commit I need to push up. Uh, you'll be able to do a git checkout on that. Um, just run npm install, npm run start, and um, npm run server, and you should be good to go. Um, yeah, and I think that's, that's it. Um, I'll post a picture of what we're going to be building in the dojo so we all have kind of a sense of what we're working towards. Uh, do we have any questions? Yeah, one heads up about this project. Um, because it's working with you know, the timers in the browser and whatnot, the challenging part is gonna be much more around how you compose together the React components than it is with uh, Reason. And we kind of do that so that you're not fighting with Reason the whole time. Um, this is just like a, a normal app you would build using JavaScript and React. Um, but you're going to be doing the same thing inside of, of reason. So hopefully the reason part shouldn't be a huge challenge um, and you should be familiar with most of the challenges of the domain if you've worked in uh, React before. Cool. And so once your group is set up, um, feel free, you know, you don't have to stay on the Zoom if you don't want to, um, you know, figure out maybe through uh, text chat, what you want to do with your group, you know, so the nice thing about group DMs is you can do a voice chat, you can do a video chat, um, you know, whatever works best for your group. And then, you know, you can get started. And as far as like setting up your editor and all that, hopefully you already have that done. Uh, like, like Sean said, you want the least experienced person to drive. So we recommend using VS code and there's an extension called VS uh, live share or just live share. Um, and using that, you can set up a workspace where everyone can have access. Uh, and uh, if you have any, like, if any problems come up or you're having challenges trying to figure out how to share your editor or whatever, um, feel free to ping either me or Joe um, here or in DMs. Um, and then probably both Joe and I will join all of the groups. So we'll be kind of just lurking in the background if you need anything. Yeah. Cool. Looks like all the groups are created. Yeah, again, if you're having issues, you know, ping me or Sean and we'll be happy to sort it out. But looks like we should be ready to start hacking. Okay, cool. So I think we're all good. So I think we can move into demos. So um, I think we'll have Sean lead this part. Yeah, sure. Why not? All right, uh, so the way this works, uh, we'll just do a quick, you know, two or three minutes uh, demo of, you know, show us what you, you built, what you styled, and then um, go over the code. So how did you manage, like, what types did you build? What state did you build? How did you get it rendering? Um, and so just kind of like describe your problem state. And then if anyone else has questions during this, uh, then they can ask, uh, or feel free to ask if you have questions. And it's particularly useful because again, everyone has the same problem loaded into their head right now. And so whenever you see a different way of doing it, it's really nice to be able to compare and contrast and say, oh, I see, like that seems like it'd be a more safe way of doing it, or that seems like a more convenient way of doing it. Um, and then after you demo, we're gonna ask you uh, what you enjoyed, what you liked about it, and what you dis disliked. 
and whatever errors, um, you know, if there was anything that like stopped your team and you had a hard time getting past. And so then we're going to take all of that feedback and we're going to give it back to the reason team. Uh, <laughs> it's a very nice dog back there. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, that, that will then go back into like the documentation, the editor tooling, the, um, and the compiler itself. So to give an example of this, the very first um, reason dojo we, we ever had, uh, every team, we built tic-tac-toe in React and every team got stuck on a error that was really, really hard. It was very cryptic. Couldn't understand it at all. And it took 30 minutes for everyone to figure it out. And then they were uh, good. We took that and we gave that back to the uh, Reason compiler team. And within eight hours, they had shipped a specific error message for that that told you what you needed to do. That said, oh, this line is here. It should be up here. Move it and this error will go away. So that's the kind of like feedback that's uh, like part of why we do this is so that we can keep making this better and better. Uh, so with that, um, I think uh, if Hyeso is comfortable, uh, our, our group will go first. So we'll go uh, in reverse order. So we'll go group four down to three, or sorry, uh, down to one. Uh, so uh, Hyeso, do you want to go ahead and demo what we built? Uh, yes. Uh, and yeah, I, I will go uh, for demo now. Um, to show this to yeah. Uh, can you see the screen? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So, uh, uh, oh, uh, in the beginning, yeah, we start to build a, uh, a try out to make a different uh, comp components uh, to get familiar with the. Uh, uh, reason ML. Uh, so uh, uh, we, uh, first we uh, made a button component, and then uh, if I'm wrong, yeah, please correct me. <laughs> no, no, yeah, keep yeah, and then. Uh, do you want Do you want to start with uh, what we actually built and show how it works? Uh, how How it works? Yeah. Actually, yeah, in the browser. Yeah, so uh, here uh, we can see the time is ticking uh, from five seconds uh, till zero. And there is a progress bar. Uh, it tells how, uh, how much we progressed uh, about the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is really healthy. Um, we don't want you to work too long at any given time. So we force it to be five mm -hmm. seconds. And then the break is also five <laughs> seconds. So it's, it really helps kind of keep you fresh at any given time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go over like how you modeled the states of the <clears throat> the application? So maybe yeah. start with the, the types. Yeah. So the uh, types, uh, we have uh, different uh, three different activities, and we uh, have a state to store the current time, ends time and activities which refers above here. And yeah, start time and time is over. Mm. Uh, and then uh, we handle the state uh, with a user state hook. Uh, and then uh, we uh, uh, checks whether time is over. And then if it's a uh, force, uh, we uh, like uh, uh, set the new state and uh, yeah, <laughs> I think I'm a bit lost, <laughs> even though I learn a lot. Uh, and also, ah, this uh, use effect is about the uh, uh, interval, yeah, time interval, we have it. Uh, I think, is it this one? Oh, no. No. Mm. Yeah, so this is our, um, yeah. our tick, the, the ticking of the talk, right? Or of the clock. So whenever yeah. we mount, we go ahead and start the um, ticking. And whenever we unmount, we clear the interval. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, and then, but the, yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think that's probably yeah. good. And then after that, we just render some yeah. uh, markup, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the markup part. So in reason, without uh, writing return, the last part uh, is going to be return. And yeah, so we return the uh, the state changes, and uh, also in here when we click on the we click on the button, we can change the type of the activity. And uh, this last part is the uh, progress bar. And uh, this is the way of giving style in Reason ML. And uh, uh, personally, I really uh, like the bug. Like uh, in, uh, if I uh, miss something or if I uh, write something wrong, the Reason compiler tells a lot of hints where I miss. And also, uh, for example, in the beginning, uh, our uh, state activity state uh, oh, it's on the top. Uh, for example, here I just uh, uh, we just start to write uh, as a string. But later on, we convert to is, is it variant type? Yeah, uh, variant type. Yeah. yeah, so it prevents from making a like a, a typo mistake. And also, it's uh, easier to uh, check like uh, all the cases uh, with a uh, yeah switch. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there anything missing more? Yeah. Uh, so how about uh, so that's what you liked. Um, how about you, Antonio, and uh, Hiaso? Like, what you what did you like? And then for both of you, um, what did you dislike? And were there any like? issues that kind of stopped your team uh, from being able to move forward? Mm. Yeah, uh, for me, yeah, I, uh, uh, I have uh, more like uh, likes than, yeah, <laughs> didn't like. It's uh, really, yeah, cool. I think uh, just uh, it takes time to understand the type concept itself because I'm not experienced. But uh, I think there is a power actually putting uh, type uh, to correct the the, the code. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Tony, do we have you on? Yes. Uh, how about uh, likes, dislikes? Yeah. Uh, at, uh, the, the syntax also, at first with the pattern matching is a bit uh, daunting, but I think as you practice it becomes more clear. So I like I like the the power that it brings. Uh, and dislikes, uh, but basically I really like it. To be honest, uh, I, I see the power in using this language. Oh, very cool. Well, I think thank you very much for I mean both of you for putting your time and and going through and building this. Uh, and let's move on to group three. Hopefully, group three. Uh, and for the other groups, hopefully you can nominate someone to do the demo. Uh, someone brave. Uh, Who's going to go from group three? Uh, Vaughn, do you want to do it? Can you do it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he was a, a programmer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just a uh, project hard work. typer. Uh, oh, but the yeah, so can you go ahead and stop sharing your screen, and then um, yeah. group three can start sharing. Sure, thanks Hesu, for the demo. Um, I refreshed the project, if you refresh the project as well. <laughs> Nothing like last minute changes right before the deadline. <laughs> That's exactly what you do. You wouldn't uh, be born for this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, sorry, I have to uh, change the security preference on my Mac to share. I have the like, same problem. Yeah, same same problem here. That's the reason I cannot yep. share. Yep. Uh, so it's gonna and it to... asked me to quit. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll okay. see you in. Yeah. Do you want to have group two? You can go while. Uh, yeah. Group three restarts. I restart as well because like, no, no, it's okay. just restart. Restart Zoom. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, who's going for uh, group two? Tatiana, you want to do the honors? I don't know. I'm not sure I can do it justice because, <laughs> um, I mean, I can share though. Uh, let me see. So, uh, Jonathan and, uh, one second, Lorenzo can fill in where I'm going to be lacking in explanation because I did not have any experience prior to this with React. So to me, that's completely like, I, I had a lot of questions about that. <laughs> so I think we probably could have done more if I didn't ask more questions, all these questions. Okay, so let me see if this works. Can you see it? Is it uh -huh. Yeah, we can see it. I assume this would be banned. <laughs> let me see if I can so all these things. Okay, so this is our th Ooh, it's exciting. So we actually mm -hmm. decided we weren't doing the progress bar. We decided to work on the settings mm -hmm. and we didn't get to the progress so much as um, So we basically had some buttons and we didn't style them. Um, we have two input fields for work session and break and so you can set them through say three minutes and Ah, yeah, it's very clever. Let's see, 15 seconds. And then we just have this like total time. So it's still work in progress. It doesn't actually separate the two. It just adds them together and counts down. And then if you start, then it starts counting down. So, oh, and uh, one other thing, uh, Jonathan kind of had this idea of, because we were debating like, what does it mean to save? Should we have some kind of local state that like, if you if you edit these values, for example, and you don't click save, what ha what does that mean versus when you do? And um, we decided to basically save these settings into local stores. So they get applied automatically right away, Whoa. but they get go into local storage. And if you reload the page, they should be there, but they're not. Oh. <laughs> did, um, did you click save? Actually, I didn't click, click save, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just forgot. Sorry, let's see. Yes, yeah. yes, it does work. It does work. I, don't, I was like, it didn't work before. Mm -hmm. What happened? Okay, so in as far as the code goes, so let me find our thing. My sunglasses are in my car. Say it again. My sunglasses are in my car. I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what are we up to here? So let's see. So we actually added a couple of extra components. So we had this one that I guess I don't remember if it was already part of the code that was there. But we basically have one main app component here. Um, and we do some, oh, hold on, am I in the right thing? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Where do we start? Yeah, okay, okay. So yeah, I mean, you know, this is the layout and we have some functions here. Where are they? Yeah, so basically, this is where we set up exactly what we're going to what we're going to do. We have the set work minutes of that break seconds action and we bind them to the event. Basically, we set these values and where do we, uh -huh. and then we have the save button. This is one of our extra components and then the timer that mm -hmm. maybe uh, Lorenzo can speak to because he wrote it. So the save button, let's see, it stores the values into local storage and that's about it. While and timer is a little mess because um, <laughs> I start to put a lot of um, data in uh, the state and a lot of action. Mm. This component should be clean a bit. Uh, what we do is um, initial uh, our state with working on true, uh, running on false, and current time with, as uh, work time uh, work minutes uh, uh, multiplies uh, to be seconds plus uh, break seconds and current interval known. Uh, then 
Jonathan uh, put uh, use effect in then because uh, uh, if we change uh, our parameters, uh, we didn't get an update. And then uh, we have uh, these parts when where uh, state dot running uh, should change the label of the button who doesn't work actually. But that's a work in progress. But yeah, so I guess that's what this does. Um, what can I say about how it went? Again, I feel like I, I had way too many questions about React itself and that was actually part of the reason I wanted to do this because I feel like two things at once is too many to try to do on your own sometimes, or like, I don't know. I kept putting it off trying to make something because I don't know any React and I don't know, plus reason is a different thing. So, and my background is currently actually in OCaml and not in web development. Mm. So, <laughs> so it was sort of like, different world and I I used to do this like years ago but and I can't remember anything anymore um, so the thing rel related to that what I was really impressed with is actually how well the tools work autocomplete and like all hover help that you get um, I mean the types themselves they don't seem strange to me and quite the opposite I feel like I sort of expected but it's it's more like how how it works with I guess with JavaScript and with React is more mysterious. So in, in any case, I think that my impression is that it's actually much less forbidding than I was expecting. And that, yeah. So it was really helpful to, to kind of hear about how to do X, Y, and Z in particular, I think. Is, is there something you would have liked to have seen? So something you wish the tooling or the compiler or the documentation, something you would have liked to have had, like, been there? Um, no, I think that it's more of a question of, um, again, it's more of a React thing, it's kind of like a cookbook, I guess. You know, mm. if you want to do something simple like text, here's some... Like for example, like this is how you use local storage. I don't know anything about that. Like, <laughs> where would you, how would you even search for that? Um, and then this was an interesting thing to discuss. Also, we talked about, you know, some untyped, how, how, how untyped, certain things are not typed, how that works. Um, there's definitely some magic that I think Probably if I went back and tried to look at this again and try to recreate it from scratch, I probably wouldn't remember. Mm. Um, so I think that maybe, again, it depends on like, you probably don't have me as your target audience. It's probably somebody who already knows reason um, or web development to a degree. So they can kind of map these things to like, oh, okay, that's that over here. Uh, no, that's a, actually that's a, it's perfect feedback. It's I really like the idea of a Reason React cookbook, and I think to your point, like figuring out how to search for DOM dot storage is not going to be an intuitive thing. Mm -hmm. So that's a great feedback for uh, we're working on ReasonML dot org right now, mm -hmm. and so we'll we'll definitely um, see if we can include some like community based snippets for a cookbook. That's nice a great idea. Cool. All right, thank you. Uh, do we want to go over to uh, group three then? Yeah, one, you're back. Um, let me try. <laughs> um, so Boom. you see my screen. Yep. Um, so yeah, let's refresh. I have a, I think I have some bug here, uh, but so refresh, uh, default to 10 seconds. Uh, there are like different options, right? But we just stick to 10 seconds. Um, and everyone's waiting. <laughs> oh, uh, something happened. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there was a. <laughs> but, um, okay. Oh, saw that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the middle of the night here, so I'm not so clear <laughs> with my mind. So it's early so morning much. here. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically. Yeah, I was at 
coming to this uh, dojo class, um, I was doing some my own uh, side project with this, uh, and <clears throat> but I learned a lot uh, from Anthony. Thanks. Uh, so, for example, he explained first why we need to do this React string function call in like JSX, uh, and it. He, what the example he showed me is like uh, in region, if you have like switch statement or if uh, you also always have to return the same type and all this has the React element type. So plain string doesn't work. You have to return uh, React element type everywhere. So uh, when I was uh, using reason on my own, uh, I just thought like, why this <laughs> unnecessary syntax? But uh, it made sense after I hear this explanation. Uh, we forgot to like you uh, translate this part string to type, but uh, there's a there was example in the beginning, so I think I can figure it out on my own time. Uh, we made bunch of types. Um, I'm not sure if all this was all necessary, but we just when we the learning, flow. Learning exercise, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one trick I did here using tuple is uh, because we have only have like two kinds of string, so we made this uh, variable so that we are using the same uh, string when it's needed. But I forgot to, for example, <laughs> put it here. <laughs> yeah, as I said, I'm not so clear with this mind. Uh, but uh, I have some problem. Uh, oh, did somebody? Like, yeah, I fixed. Uh, I fixed the elapsed time, so we didn't have to elapse time into a hook, and so it wouldn't change nothing. That's okay. the reason it worked finally. Ah, <laughs> uh, so 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 the bug is now gone, or ah, uh, the okay. bug is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's uh, just okay. a problem. It's like every time you see something's not re-rendered with those hooks, you have to make sure you. And I changed it to use effect two with uh, the stuff. So mm. As we still go one second over. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I thought we have both, but actually we don't. Um, but um, yeah, I was wondering that like because we want to clear interval, uh, we wanted to clear interval when the last time, like time passed, was bigger than uh, the time we set. But because the interval ID is needed when clearing interval. And then in this function, like in this function body, uh, interval ID is not yet defined. So I wonder but if there is a way to get it, the ID. The, and the, the secret is to move it to a React ref. Mm -hmm. And so we can, we can set the current to the ref mm -hmm. and then we can, we can undo this interval stuff. We didn't have time for it. I also noticed that you, you use the, like a lot of little different um, React use states versus I think for group two and uh, four, they kind of had like one big state for a lot of their, their stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Curious why you went with, with this approach. It seems like pretty interesting. Mm, yeah. Do you have any reason, Anthony? It's just based on, on, on doing this a lot. I always find that I'm not afraid of creating many states. They always usually quite easy to. I understand to use register stuff, but that was just in the interest of time and to, to learning we were doing. I was thinking it would be easier to explain use state than uh, having to explain use register as well. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Well, there's no, there's always a better way for sure. I don't know. It, it seems perfect. I mean, this seems just as safe. The compiler is happy. It seems good. <laughs> Whatever I, works, I, yeah. I was wondering if you put a lot of state in uh, one uh, state and use reducer, is it going to be like slow when you like change setting state or stuff like that? I don't think so. Not especially. Um, so because reason is by default immutable in most places. Like it's really hard to mutate something. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it basically is set up in a way that React can check to see if the value has really changed and defer rendering 
pretty efficiently most of the time. Mm -hmm. So I think most of the time it ends up just being a slight, like a preference. So just if you prefer lots of little mm -hmm. states or one big state with some reducers, um, just whatever fits better for your mental model of like the, mm -hmm. like the domain you're working on. Mm -hmm. so, so when I uh, actually try the region React Native, so I'm a little bit sidetracking, but there was one case I couldn't use the reducer, but I had to use a, a user state. Uh, that was, uh, I was developing for uh, Android barcode scanner, so razor scanner, uh, just uh, emits a native key event in really short time. So when I was using reducer and uh, storing scanned barcode in order, with order state, it kind of didn't work when I did it. And then when I used this, like, if uh, use state and just store the barcode, uh, it worked for me, but maybe I was doing something else wrong, but uh, that was uh, why I, that time made difference to me. Uh, well, that's, that's also like pretty good anecdotal, uh, like that's, that's something that I'll keep in mind if I, I run into a similar problem is yeah. if I, I'll try uh, use state as like a more efficient way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm doing, I was doing it right, but uh, while scanning barcode, you scan like, 12 different keys, uh, but it, it's like 12 different events in a uh, split of seconds. Mm. So you, you call this set state in like 12 times in like 1 point, uh, point 0.1 seconds. So I don't know if it has to do anything, but just if you find out <laughs> if that's the case, let me know. That's super interesting. But just, just in that regard, um, I'd like to add something uh, about the use reducer thing. What I oftentimes end up doing is uh, using use reducer in the way you would use use state because it looks cleaner in reason. So I'll just um, uh, you use the function with a um, with an underscore and a value and set it to value, give it a default, and then you can just use um, the reducer functions uh, like a normal set state function and you don't have to uh, pass a function each time you update the state. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that looks a little bit cleaner. Mm. Oh, very interesting. Well, um, yeah. Uh, yeah so, I don't know if there's anything else I should explain, so yeah. No, I think it's, it's good. I'm curious for your team, um, things you liked and things you didn't like, things you'd like to see changed. Mm. Uh, I mean, we, we had one, one big problem with VS Code, so... Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. we should change VS Code or like we're going to get all these Emacs now? Or I mean, I'm down, yeah. but I don't know if that, that's good for everyone. <laughs> oh, it's a bit more away, man. <laughs> it's not Emacs. Uh, so what, what, what was the problem? Uh, we never got, uh, one of our team members could never get it to run. It would, we, we try, we try uh, many, many different solutions, but it wouldn't. Interesting. Yeah. So one of the rules we try to enforce with uh, Reason Dojo is that we want everyone to leave with a working editor. So, so we don't have one. Person. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> feel free to ping me afterward and we'll see what we can do. At the very least, we should open up some issues to make sure that that problem is resolved. We try to uninstall uh, BSB globally, just that's usually to fix and open it from the command line using code dot, but it didn't fix it. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, things you liked then? Anyone yeah. else wants to go in? So I have a background was using dynamic click typed languages like Clojure and JavaScript and stuff. Um, but uh, the thing I didn't like when I was using dynamic language was uh, I use magic string everywhere. like. Mm. But uh, instead of magic string, I could use like types. I really definitely like it. And then uh, the I didn't use, uh, yeah, here's pattern matching. When pattern matching, there's a warning when you miss a mishandling case. Um, but I, I wonder like if it's better if it's not a warning, but actually error so that you couldn't compile issues on and because what what happens you ignore warning would you get exception when you 
find the. So yeah, if you ignore it and uh, that value comes up in like a branch that you haven't handled, if you haven't mm -hmm. handled a case and that does occur, then it will crash. Yeah. And so um, it's pretty common that, um, like Blaine says, that you can, for production build, you can mm -hmm. actually change any warnings into, you can turn warnings on and off, and you can also turn mm -hmm. them into fatal errors. So you mm -hmm. can say that um, when we're building for production, this should not be allowed. So don't, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, break the build. Don't push it to production. Yeah. So you, you can definitely um, like choose the slider for uh, what you want. By default though, I would say that like the only time you really um, ignore the warnings is during development. Uh, mm -hmm. For us, like we would never push to production with warnings. Like we, mm -hmm. we either we turn off the warning because we say, well, we're smarter than the compiler. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very rare that we are smarter than the compiler or we yeah. fix the warning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Another thing is that those are regular variants you could use polymorphic variants. Those mm -hmm. are slightly different ones, and mm -hmm. the pattern matching is not done strict with those. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it, it's a different type, but you would, you would have the same benefits as, as a variant, which is not be as a strict in that system. All right, yeah. I think this is, uh, this is I, great. I mean, I can I can as well like it's it, it's different. It's not just a feedback on the dojo, but it's been over a year of production here on my side of uh, reason, mm -hmm. and um, my 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 stuff that I really love at the moment is the reason reason relay stuff. It's so good. We we just shipped a full on a production app with reason relay and it's working super well. So all these PPX stuff are amazing. We're using Apollo before, but. I think too. And my, my biggest problem with reasons uh, at the moment is when you're using a property that a reason or reason react doesn't want to add it like test ID or no. was, was doing a lot of video streaming at the moment for uh, peer to peer streaming. And uh, there's some property in video that don't exist in reason react. And so when they're not there, you have to go around with the react clone elements to, yeah. to add them manually. And that's a little bit of a shame. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, there's an open issue for that, and it's very unclear how to actually solve that. So, uh, like, better than like what Yawar has kind of shown with the community. Yeah, yeah but good, good feedback. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, I think we have one last group left, which is Group One. Uh, Juan, do you want to stop sharing? And uh, uh, yeah, sure. We will uh, move on to our last group. Get our feedback here. I'm sure we've saved the best for last. No pressure at all. Nice back front. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can... So I think we spent most of the time. Um, um, I had a David and Janice. They spent all the time teaching me the basis of a reason from scratch so this is what we'll come up with and i think we're able to update states so you could uh, put the value here and you can update states and i think this is the most beautiful application ever built yes so. super super <laughs> useful Every, everyone needs one of these yeah yeah <laughs> i won't sell it <laughs> yeah so um my impression first was the fastness of the compiler i think it's pretty fast right then um let me close the list and maybe I've got around this later. Okay. So um first we started with the um separating the form, we created a component for the form, which is this. We had it's we had a state in it using um, a reality state, but well, later we removed that after it away and the, we now pass just a function from the app, right? Um this uh, function here to just um, set the state when you click on the button, which actually this took like almost like an hour to teach me how it actually works. And the part I really like here was um, this record and object. You can, one is actually typed and one is not, which actually makes super cool sense. Okay, so I really like that. Then, um, um, then uh, I wasn't getting maybe this from the this is from the reason uh, extension in VS Code. 
when I try to like uh, put tags like uh, HTML tags, I don't get like uh, a license. I don't know, like mm, it doesn't complete. Okay. complete yeah, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't get auto complete. And uh, that and uh, okay, all that things. Okay, it, I think it, I, can you go into um, app.re real quick? And we'll see if it's going to autocomplete your form. So if you um, open up a new tag with a capital F somewhere. Want to do this? Yeah. So we get a. So it'll do autocomplete for like your component, but not for the actual tags. That's good feedback. Okay. Okay. Then um. Then I notice sometimes you, I have an error. Then when I fix the error, um, VS could see flags as an error until I have to like restart this. I have to restart the language server like a couple of times, almost like five times. So um, yeah, that and I think I think uh, it's cool. Though the, the the syntax is weird when you start at first, but if you get at just with uh, if you get hang of it, kind of makes sense why they're out there and kind of at all. So I think this is a good impression for me. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, that's great. All right, so it sounds like um, autocomplete for um, the basic HTML tags and um, a less language crashy, server. yeah, a less crashy reason language server. There's some other thing that causes us many problems. Um, that if you're not familiar with reason, you will not not guess. This is the 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 familiarity with like now. Um, now you just take you receive a function that updates the value all the time that is different from JavaScript. That's kind of okay that the, the idea is different. What it makes is very tricky is when you, so since reason is like current by default, uh, uh. usually you're passing whatever value that the state you, you're hoping for. And the compiler says, no, no, um, whatever, right? So that error is very complex, very cryptic. And the other error is like when you try to return well, you return by accident two different elements in a React uh, component. And the error says syntax wrong or something. Um, uh -huh. And I think I'm pretty sure that the ST of those are like relatively simple errors to, to trigger. No, that's a good point. I, yeah. Okay. So, um, what, what, what was the second one specifically? So I can, I'm trying to, to say, yeah, like, same time. Yeah, sorry. Um, when when a React component uh, returns more than one element, so I mean, when you have like in the middle of the React component, you you throw JSX, and the compiler doesn't know which is the returnable or not, mm. and that error is very cryptic. Got it. All right. So the first one is like you uh, are currying your functions, and you just haven't finished applying it. But rather than yeah. telling you, hey, you need more, it's like. I wanted this big thing. Yeah, exactly. Got it. That error is, is weird for, for newbies. It's, it's, it's really hard to guess. Yeah, that, that one's like a pretty challenging one to think about how to, uh, to make better. But I agree, it's something that we need to work on. At, at least just for the use state would be, would be a massive one, or just for the callback props. So um, maybe like a, a use state uncurried by default or something? We do have a pull request that uncurries the use state. Got it. Now in React reason, but yeah, a person that comes new, um, if you tell them that you need to do react .uncurried .use state, would would it would be weird, right? Yeah. So okay. No, well, I think uh, I mean thank you so much for doing a demo. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, mentors who helped on each of the teams, and definitely thank you to all the new people who tried it out. Like you guys are all the guinea pigs who got kind of experimented on here. Uh, one with, you know, new to Reason, new to React, also new to this entirely new re remote dojo format. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm pretty happy about, you know, nothing caught on fire as far as I can see. So that, that alone, that was kind of my, my baseline. So I think that's it's pretty successful. Um, with that said, uh, it would be great if each team would uh, push up what they worked on to GitHub somewhere and then just share it in the Reason Dojo. That way other people can find it in the future if they're, they're curious to look, look at it. Mm. Uh, and with that, I think, uh, yeah, cheers, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, Joe, do you want to close this out?
Yeah, thank you all for coming. Thanks for participating. Hopefully this is fun. Um, if you have feedback on how we could run this more smoothly, you can DM me or DM Sean. Um, we're not sure how frequently we're going to do this. This was an experiment. Uh, so if you know you would come again or if you'd recommend to a friend, like that's helpful feedback. Honest feedback's good and critique. So send that our way. And uh, yes, I, I think for time zones, uh, thank you so much for staying up so late and coming. Yes. We, will, we will do a uh, Eurocentric time zone one next time. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so we will uh, accommodate those of you who are up at four o'clock in the morning. Definitely appreciate that. <laughs> it's good yeah. that for once he was an Australian to have to stay up all night. Exactly, right, yes. <laughs> the programmers awesome. are used to this, right? <laughs> all right no, I go to bed at nine every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much. Uh, have a good uh, night or day, I guess, and I'll see you in uh, the Discord. Thank Cheers. You. See you. Thanks thank for you. organizing. Thank you so much for organizing. Thanks, all. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks.